It's been more than seven months since protests rocked Iran after the tragic killing of 22-year-old Kurdish Iranian woman Masa Jina Amini. After her name became a trending hashtag from Iran and beyond, Amini's death sparked global condemnation. The protests, mostly led by women, demanded an end to mandatory hijab, but turned into a national revolt calling for the removal of the Islamic Republic and accountability for human rights violations and corruption. Activists have challenged mandatory hijab and discriminatory laws against women for decades. Since Massa's death and in open defiance of the Iranian regime, thousands of women have been seen ditching their mandatory hijab. Iranian authorities have clamped down and begun installing cameras in public places to catch unveiled women. Authorities have also shut down hundreds of shops and restaurants in retaliation for not abiding by the obligatory rule. Despite the heroic bravery of Iran's women, they are still treated unequally under Iranian law. Nevertheless, the fight for women's rights and, more broadly, the Iranian people's fight for freedom will continue because of the courage of Iranians who dare to protest. The people of Iran will not stop until the Islamic Republic is no more. For Nika, for Sarina, for Gina Massa, for freedom. To present the Distinguished Humanitarian Leadership Award, please welcome Executive Director of the Georgetown Institute for Women, Peace, and Security, Ambassador Milan Verveer. What a glorious celebration this is this evening of women's leadership. Thank you, Atlantic Council. And congratulations to all of the honorees. I also want to thank the Atlantic Council for the impactful work the Council does every single day and the difference it makes around the world. And one of the many places in the world our focus needs to be is on Iran. Last September, a young Iranian Kurdish woman, Masajina Amini, died after being held by the brutal morality police for, in their eyes, wearing the mandatory hijab improperly. Her death sparked an unprecedented protest movement across Iran that continues to this day Young women were on the front lines of the massive peaceful demonstrations. And they were quickly joined by students and university communities, by men and women of all ages from all walks of life. They joined together for an end to the repressive regime and its dictatorial rule. They have been willing to rise, to risk their lives for a cause bigger than themselves. Thousands of protesters have been detained. Schoolgirls have been poisoned for their activism. Many others have been assaulted, imprisoned, and killed. And executions are increasing. The women of Iran continue to be catalysts for change. In fact, they have been on the front lines for decades. Their demand for woman, life, and freedom cannot be extinguished and has challenged the very foundation of the regime. We stand in solidarity with these brave and resilient women and many around the globe have been doing what they can to raise their voices. Some, for example, have recently joined the call to remove Iran from the UN Commission on the Status of Women, given the regime's draconian restrictions on women's rights 
and imposing egregious limits on their freedom and human rights. Thanks to a worldwide effort, the UN vote was successful. And tonight, we stand together with the women and girls of Iran. And to accept this award on their behalf, our courageous women leaders in their own right, Azam Jangravi is a human rights advocate and former political prisoner. She is primarily known for being one of the so-called Girls of the Revolution Street during the 2017 Iranian protests against the compulsory hijab. Dr. Marangi's car is recognized globally for her defense of women's rights and human rights in Iran. She is truly a giant in her field, a lawyer, widely published author, scholar, and activist. And she too has been persecuted by the Iranian regime for her efforts to promote equality and to end discrimination against women. And Nazanin Noor, an Iranian American who has used her platform as an actor and writer to advocate for, advocate for human rights in Iran. And she has been a champion for women and girls there, active on social media as well. And in a recent post, she wrote, I know there's an absurd and depressing amount of terrible things happening in the world at any given moment, but please, don't leave the Iranian people to fight this regime alone. And you will hear from her shortly. May I ask the women to please come up on the stage. Good evening. Uh, Dr. Afghami was not able to join us this evening as she is a bit under the weather. However, I would like to read to you her acceptance remarks on our collective behalf. Thank you to the Atlantic Council for the tremendous honor of this leadership award representing the women and girls of Iran who are fighting for freedom and equality. Distinguished guests, it is a privilege for me to accept this award, award on behalf of the millions of mothers, sisters, and daughters in Iran who at great personal risk are pressing for a brighter future. The seeds of Iranian women's liberation were planted over 100 years ago. In 1906, Iranian women took an active part in shaping the constitutional revolution that transformed governance and political participation in the country and in the region. Over the next seven decades, Iranian women helped move Iran to a democratic, participatory system that was inclusive of religious, political, socioeconomic, and other minorities. In 1963, Iranian women, many of whom were choosing to delay marriage, enter a profession, even attend college, were granted the right to vote. In 1966, Iranian women successfully launched one of the most influential and powerful national women's organizations in the world. The Women's Organization of Iran would influence Iran's leadership at the 1968 UN International Human Rights Conference, 
and the establishment of INSRA, the UN's Research and Training Institute for the Advancement of Women. In 1975, Iran passed the Family Protection Law, which remains to this day one of the most progressive and comprehensive in the Middle East and in much of the world. Among its reforms were women's rights to divorce, guardianship of their children, and childcare for working women, among others. In 1979, exactly two weeks after Khomeini came to power, his very first decree was to nullify the family protection law. He then also banned women from many jobs and from obtaining college degrees in over 40 disciplines. He banned contraceptives and brought back polygamy, forced veiling, and segregation of women and men. To this day, the clerical leadership of the Islamic Republic has hinged on the repression of women. Time and again, the regime's response to women's calls for greater freedom has been swift and brutal. But the extraordinary women of Iran have persevered. From the One Million Signatures campaign in 2006, where activists went door to door gathering signatures in favor of women's equality, to later pushes for employment opportunities and fair elections, women have been in the vanguard demanding change. Sparked this time by the senseless senseless death of Masa Jina Amini, calls for woman life freedom are still blazing across the nation. Today, women and men are marching side by side in support of a revolution that was launched by women and girls. And I'm gonna pause right here for a second. I'm gonna go off script because of a recent development yesterday, and I would like to um, inform the room of this, that the Islamic Republic was appointed chair of the United Nations Human Rights Council Social Forum. This year's theme is technology and the promotion of human rights. This comes in the midst of the United Nations Human Rights Council uh, fact-finding mission, where they're investigating human rights abuses and atrocities committed by the Islamic Republic against their own people from September of 2022, when this revolution began. It comes amongst internet shutdowns and throttling of internet so that the world cannot see the atrocities that are being committed by the Islamic Republic. It comes as the Islamic Republic uses technology to surveil women using facial recognition technology to send fines to anybody that is seen wearing improper hijab. This comes among two young men, Youssef Mehrad and Sadrullah Fazali Zareh, who were executed on charges of blasphemy and apostasy for using technology and a social media app to discuss religion and atheism. I respectfully implore everybody in this room to use platforms that you have to publicly condemn the UN's position in appointing the Islamic Republic uh, to this social forum. The Islamic Republic and human rights is an oxymoron and it's a slap in the face to the people of Iran that have been brutalized, oppressed, and tortured um, for them to sit on this forum. This is the first revolution in history to be initiated by women and supported by men. It is It is the result of the work of the thoughtful, dedicated women who a century ago were open to learning from each other and from the rest of the world about rights and freedoms and how to achieve them. Their history shows a worldview that is worthy of the fact that women are half of the world's population and that they train and raise the children of both genders. Their unique success is based on a holistic approach that reflects the reality of the lives of the majority of the people of the world and that allows for dialogue and interactive decision-making. The success of this revolution, which is modern in its goal and in its language, slogans, and approach, promises that with the expansion of communications technology, Iranian women's latest struggle finally brings the promise of a truly global movement on which, at this moment, is in dire need of collection, uh, collective action. And we can all agree on that. As the protests in Iran continue, from a distance, one day's events can be hard to distinguish from those of the next. 
it is easy for the sacrifices of the protesters to disappear from the headlines. On their behalf, and on behalf of individuals fighting for freedom everywhere, including here in the United States, I implore you to continue your solidarity. I implore you to support democracy. I implore you to stay the course on equal rights for all. In doing so, you fuel the memory of Masa Jina Amini and the continued dream of freedom and equality for Iranian women and girls. Thank you.